We've got another Guru Clinic on the cards, folks, and it features Matthew Godfrey. Hello. We're in his tackle den, and he's going to be running through how to cut your nails with Guru Rick scissors. Oh, manicure. I am. I um, I apologise. I have got dirty finger nails and fingers because mm -hmm. I went fishing with bronze pinkies at the weekend. Right. It's not my hair dye. It's the pink. <laughs> it's the pinky dye that's rubbed <laughs> off on my hands. What are you going to run through, mate? Uh, silver fishy rigs. Not necessarily for winter, but mainly commercial style. I've got um, a deep water skimmer rig to show you. For places like, you know, Meadowlands, um, Messingham, where we've been fishing, all Allcroft yeah. when it's windy. And then I've got a shallow water skimmery pellet rig. There's a lot of that fishing at the minute. Shallow water tapping pellets in, catching lots of skimmers. Um, and then a little through the water, I'd wrote shallow fishing silvers commercial rig. Love it. First one, deep skimmer rig. Nice, um, stable flow, pingers, love them to bits. I use the wire one more than anything because it's... Lovely, um, stable wire stem in any wind, nice and heavy. Round body so you can hang on to it. It rides into the waves nicely, doesn't pop up. And a 1.5 mil super visible hollow plastic bristle, because I have got very bad eyes. <laughs> I've got my contacts in at the minute. Um, I'm going to tie 0.75 of a gram up today, because it's for Medellin's this weekend where I'm going. 0.15 engage mainline now for me that's a nice balance of thickness and robust durability without it being really thick and stiff and affecting the presentation in particular the bit between your pole tip and your float if that line's too thick catches the wind catches the skim and can affect your presentation so 015 i think is a lovely balance i'm going to use my heavy weight that i stole from the big one show Thief. yeah this one on the guru stand holding a sign up it's perfect for sticking on your spool of line so it keeps it all nice and tight yeah first thing to do is thread the float on top the line and oh 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 there, there we go it. and then i've got three bits of silicon i'm really fussy about my silicon i like two shorter bits and a little longer bit for the last piece can't pick it up now i've cut my nails for your tank what type of silicon is it it's i don't know what size it is because i've my tub's empty but it's the Silverfish Rig Silicon. Um, yeah. And the reason I use it is because it's ridiculously thin and also very, very soft. Now, there's loads of good silicon on the market that'll work fine, but a lot of it's very thick in the walls, whereas this stuff's super thin. So it goes on your float really nicely, can stretch it over. Easy, oh, it goes on lovely. It's got to be pretty tight as well, though. You don't want your float moving about. Mm. But, um, can you see how thin it is? So it doesn't affect, get that last bit on there. It doesn't affect the flow in any way. If your silicon's too thick, I'm sure it affects presentation. And I always leave the last little bit up here, about a centimetre down from the body, just so that line there isn't too tight against the body. Don't put too much pressure on your flow. I like it. So float on the line. We'll steadily slide her up. Slide up. Little tip for you, you know, whenever you are moving your float on the line, don't make any sharp movements. If you shove it up fast, it'll twist your line up and it can lead to the line cutting into your float. It's like ch a cheese grater, a, a cheese wire, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, I'm tie a loop in the end using my good old fashioned loop tire. I always, always have used that. And then trim her off. So, ready to go now. I'm ready to put my shots on. Now, this bit will really blow your head up. Got this old rig board. I've had it for years. I buy the rig strips off my mate Jordan Holloway, that rig mate, and stick them onto a piece of wood. He also does a ridiculously good um, rig mate that I'm sure you've seen Andy Bennett's rig videos. I've just not got one yet. I need to get myself one. But I understand this, and every time I go away, I do a lot of fishing all over the world, which is why you can see uh, different patterns like Portugal, Commercial, stainy, river teas. Um, and every time I find a new pattern, I just stick a strip on and mark it on my board. So I've got a reference of it. But um, the one that we're going to use today is a pattern that Will Raisin showed me a few years ago. Hence, Will 42 centimetres. And it's a taper. So what that means is the shots start further apart, about 14 centimetres apart. What do you do then? You just put it on a little... So I put, I put my loop over a little nail there. Yeah. And then, pull this up here, and then 
what basically happens is where these little marks are is where I'm going to put my shot. And what I do is I mark the line with a pen, permanent mm -hmm. marker, and then I put the shot exactly where the marks are. So every rig has got every shot in exactly the same place. There's nothing worse than getting another rig out. So with this here look tank, you see I've got this weird little line. Yeah, what's that? That's for my bulk. bulk. My bulk yeah. could be there somewhere. And first shot, next shot, next shot, next shot. Ignore this one because that's for another pattern. Watch <laughs> why it's a bit longer. See what I mean? Tell yeah. you confuse you. Next shot. And then one goes down here. So when I lift that off now. It's a true taper, isn't you it? You can see. Yeah. I don't know if you can see again, Sat. You can see the yeah, black see dead easy. And I will literally put the shot. Where the on are. them black marks. So every rig I do is exactly the same. I'll move them happily on the bank, but that starting point's the same. Now, biggish float, 0.75 gram. I'm going to go for pretty big positive shots in that deep water. I'm going to go for number nines as the bottom shot. So the first six are going to be number nines, and then I'll stick some eights above them to form my bulk. So number nines. Quite a positive bottom shot, it, isn't it? It is, but skimmers in deep water... You get lots of little dinks and lifts, and if you use too small a shot, you don't see the registration on your flight. If you think about it, a heavier shot, if you lift it or dislodge it, because it's heavier, the fish is moving more weight, so you either see a lift or a more positive indication. If it's only a little shot, your float won't move as far when fish move it. So can you see it? Oh, drop that one. That's going to go down well in the Mrs. <laughs> Hoover. Um, I put the shot on the line like that, and I literally... Just slide them up to the middle of where my mark is and nip it on. And it's dead quick and easy to tie rigs in this way because you can get all your shot perfectly accurate. Look, so put it on my line, slide it up to where my mark is and nip it on. It was actually Will Razor who showed me this way of doing rigs. And I think it was Steve Gardner that showed him years ago. Love it. Um, so I'm going to put them bottom six on, them number nines. I noticed this with Andy's as well. The shot go on really evenly, don't they, with the... Um, Players. Yeah. Unbelievable, mate. I, I don't know how people bite shot on. I mean, I ain't got the best of front teeth, but um, I just think you can get them on so much neater evenly, yeah. and firm and clear. So I've got them bottom six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then here, I've got that little mark for my bulk. And for my bulk, because it's a big float, I'm going to use number eight, just so I don't need quite as many of them. Mm-hmm. Why do you use shot and not say cubes, Matt? Um, because, I'll be honest, cubes move about a little bit more, which really gets on my nerves. So we're going to use another word then. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always used shot. You know, I've always... I'm just going to leave a little tiny gap between these tanks. Just so there's a little bit of movement. In case my rig goes over anything, you'll see. Just lovely little talking millimetre or millimeter, two. Yeah. It just stops, um, if you try and cram them right together. You can kick off a little bit. Yeah, it sometimes like bends your bulk a bit. I don't know how many this is going to take. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put what? What do you reckon? Six? Just yeah, five, six. Six, let's go six. Should we go five? I'll go five, yeah, I won't go Right, back. let's go five then. So as you can see there, that's the shotting pattern. You've got the main bulk and then Neat this that. taper mm. of shot getting further apart. And the whole idea is... You get a nice stable bolt, gets down there nice and quick, and this second bit of your rig just falls in slower, slower, slower into the zone where them skimmers and commercial silvers, whatever you're fishing for, hopefully is going to be sitting. Testing the rig, little trick for you. We haven't all got a swimming pool, a garden pond, or a really tall um, rig tube, but obviously if I drop that in that tube now, the tube's not deep enough. Nope. Good tip for you. Get your loop. Put it back over the bristle of your float, like that. So all the weight is still in the capacity of the float. Always give your float a nice lick. Why? It breaks the surface tension and it'll be exactly the same on the bank as it is when you test it at home in here. What a guess. I'm saying that's a great guess. You got... I'm not... I ain't happy with that, though. No. Because I always like a few trimmer shot on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of them number eights off. Yeah. And I'm going to put a number 10 on. Why do you like then trimmer a couple, shots? I, I like them because it gives me a little bit of play in my rig. So if ever you're going to take a shot off tank, I'll show you here, look. People get really scared of doing it, but if you get it so that 
the slit's facing up and you nip it along the slit. You see how that's come dead loose? Yeah. And then turn it around and nip it the other way. It just comes off dead easy. Whoa. Yeah? And it doesn't damage the line at all, look. That line's absolutely fine. Right. I'm not just saying it because we're on camera. I've learned something massive there. Yeah? Yeah, because I've bit before and I've... I've yeah, you bite your line off. But if you just concentrate yeah. and nip it the opposite way to how... So you nip it on that way, don't you? Yeah. Close the slit. Yeah. If you actually nip the slit, it wow. opens it back up. You move it along and just nip it off. You're a magician. I ain't a magician. So what I'm going to do, I'll take that number eight off. I'm going to stick a number ten on. Mm -hmm. the, these are what? These are... These are trimmers. Yes. So stick them at the top of that bulk. And then I'm going to put a couple of number 13 cubes just at the top. They're just to dot it down. And the so beauty tiny, of... Tiny, tiny little cubes. Tiny little cubes. The, the idea of that, though, is if I want to... If the light changes and I want a little bit more bristle stuck out, I can. Or if the float takes on a little bit of water, which generally foam floats that these are never do but it's a habit it's a good habit to get into to leave yourself a little bit of play and versatility yes yeah, so that's much higher yeah it's a little bit higher in it no but you can do it on the bank i've always found yeah it. Like you can put an odd so on. what i'll do with that is i'll stick another 13 cube on which will dot it down a little bit more but now rather than just having a number eight to take off i can tweak the rig oh can't get this one on. I can tweak the rig a lot more by ha by taking one of them little tiny ones off, that looks really rather neat than a big earlier. one. Yeah, love it. So that's that's pretty, pretty much done, mate. We'll have a little check if you want. I know it's going to be right. You make know, that a lot for more, me. You make you a lot more versatile, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So if you want to, you can stick another one on if you want it dotted right down. You could take one off if you're struggling to see your float, but it means you've got more versatility to play around with um, the bristle. And that is a shotting pattern, like I said, Will showed it me when I first went away with him um, to Portugal a few years ago now. Caught me so many fish in deep water. The bulk's 42 centimetres from the loop, and these shot just slowly get further and further apart. They start 14 centimetres. 13 centimetres, then a bit closer, a bit closer, a bit closer than the bulk. So that goes down. This falls in nice and slow, nice and stable, but you get that all important fall, which is where the fish see it. Um, another little trick for you. I'm going to wrap this rig up now. I never, ever, ever put hook lengths on any of my rigs at all. I think it's, I think it's a bad habit to get into because when you get to your peg, certain conditions, certain pegs, certain days, certain venues you always need different hooks and line for your hook lamp so i like to just wrap my rigs on my winders without hooks and then put the hooks on on the bank so if it's a freezing cold day i might want to fish 08 instead of 010 i might want to use an f1 maggot instead of an f1 pellet so it just again gives you more versatility and having that in your fishing as a match angler very important i've got a brand new winder here mm -hmm. i'll show you a little trick you ready i knit the winder off there. Did you see that? Yeah. You showed me this. I've just video, cut yeah. that there like that, right? On it's perfect on these rewinders. I don't know if I meant to show breaking the <laughs> rewinders. But what I do then is I put my loop over that like so. Can you see that? Like love it. What does that do? That keeps the loop super straight. See how straight it is there? Yeah. So if I wrapped it round there, you get a little bend in the top of your loop. After that's been on this winder for however long, I'm going to use this rig on Sunday at Meadowlands. After it's been on here for however long, um, it just means that that loop's really, really straight. So when you do attach your hook length, it everything's in line and nice and straight and direct. Great tip. Um, and then it's just a case of wrapping it on. So I've put four winds on there already. I know that about 14 winds around so five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen wraps is about a top four i am terrible i don't use pole anchors either so all i do is when i get to the bottom of my winder there hold my line like that mm -hmm. this is really a little habit thing you don't mm -hmm. realize you do all this till someone's filming you do it and i 
So I trap my line there and then I tie a big loop in the end of here. Just a big lazy loop like that. Because I'll never fish with my rig at that length. I'll always shorten it on the bank. Just cut that off. So that loop then tied there is the perfect length to just pop over the bottom of the wind like that. Love it. Don't actually use a pole anchor or anything. And that is the first rig of the day. Use it for all my commercial deep water silver fishy fishing, in particular skimmers. I actually use the same pattern on a lot of natural venues. And I reckon, should we finish off by giving the rig away to one of the someone who's commented on the film? Very generous of you. Should we do it? Yeah. Well, that means I can't use it this weekend. No, no, I don't. I've got what, another one here. Ask people one. to comment. Right, I've got another one here, so I'll tie this one up for myself after. Um, right, comment below, folks, where where you'd use this rig, the venue you'd use this rig that I've just tied for you, and a little bit of the reason why you'd use it. Love it. Get commenting, folks. We'll pick a winner and we'll post you the rig. Love it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you catch some fish on it. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. And if you want to see how I tie this one, which is the next float, a little slim for skimmer fishing with pellets and shallow water, click the little link here. Is that right, Tank? Here? This yeah. area here? Around there, In yeah. In here. Let's click, click the link. Next video.